Hey guys, see the Summit here. I'm getting ready to do an oil change on my Honda Ruckus. I'm gonna do a little how-to tutorial on how to do that. Um, there's tons of videos online of how to mod these things. And I think people get so caught up in modding that the one thing that it kind of lacks is the simple how-to. You know, not everybody that has one of these scooters is gonna be modding the hell out of it and making it something crazy. Um, there are people out there that buy these just to keep them stock and just to commute on. So maintenance is definitely a big part of keeping an engine running well for a long time. And today we're gonna do one of the most basic maintenances that you can do, and that is a oil change. So right now I have it warming up. Um, you wanna get it to just about normal running temperature. That helps everything kind of loosen up and run out a little bit easier um, viscosity than what it would if it was cold. Um, so while this is setting there running up, Warming up, sorry, I'm gonna gather up the few things we need to do this and I'll meet back with you guys in a second. All right guys, so all you're gonna need to do this job, uh, aside from your oil of course, is a 17 millimeter socket and a wrench, 17 millimeter or crescent wrench. Obviously a 17 millimeter wrench would be preferred. Um, and a pinch, if you don't have a 17 millimeter socket, you could use a wrench for both. Um, but if you have a socket, it's a little bit easier to get the drain plug out with that. Um, so as you can see, this is pretty simple, like basic tools that pretty much everybody should have or have the ability to get. Uh, as I said, I, and I don't recommend it, but as I said, you could do it all essentially with a crescent wrench. Uh, you could literally pick that up just about anywhere. So engine's warm, we got our tools set aside. Uh, we need something to drain the oil in um, I am actually going to use a measuring cup. Um, I hear that people overfill these from the factory and um, I'm actually curious to see how much oil was in it. It's supposed to be 600 milliliters is what you fill it to and I'd be willing to bet this has well over that. So um, yeah, let's get to it. I apologize, I didn't mean to show you guys tools the whole time I was uh talking about that and giving it a rundown um, but anyways moving forward so your drain plug is going to be on your CVT side or your non exhaust side so it's gonna be this side here with your Kickstarter and it is going to be the chrome bolt all the way back by your spring for your kickstand and again that is a 17 millimeter That was tight, probably a little bit tighter than it should have been, but again, it's a brand new bike. This is literally the first oil change uh, from the factory. I got right out about 90 miles on it. Um, a lot of people were probably thinking that's pretty low miles to be doing an oil change. I'll get into that in my engine break-in video. All right, so oil coming out. Uh, one of the things you really want to look for is uh, coloration. Uh, color looks pretty good and as of right now I don't see any metal flakes in it so as you can see we're already basically filling it up and it's probably gonna overflow one on the ground luckily I have these mats down um, and it's not even showing signs of wanting to stop yet so I guess the oil doesn't look too bad but it is a little dark for something that only has a hundred miles on it um, I'm gonna let that finish draining and then I'll get back to you guys in a second. All right, so I guess it wasn't too overfilled. It was uh, right at probably just a little over 600 milliliters. Um, so I did this off camera, but you can actually take the bike and tilt it to the side and it gets the last little bit of oil out. Um, now that we got this done, I'm gonna reinstall this drain plug real quick and then we'll move on to the screen. So, a lot of cars, or all cars, I guess, have a oil filter to catch contaminants and metal shavings that get in your oil and cause dilution. Um, a lot of your scooters, and I would assume some motorcycles, have what's called a strainer or a screen. And basically what it is, it's a little like wire mesh basket that catches a lot of your contaminants that you have in your oil. 
So that is at the very front of the engine, right in front of the little skid plate, and it is a 17 millimeter bolt. There is an order to which this goes together. So for those of you doing it for the first time, take it slow and uh, try and go as slow as possible on this video. Uh, sorry if I am rushing it. Um, I just got off work and there's a storm going, so I'm actually just trying to get this wrapped up real quick. Um, if you guys have any questions in the comments, please feel free to drop them below. And I'll be sure to try and get to you. So I, I said uh, um, you need a wrench for this. You might be able to get in here with a socket um, if you had one that was stubby enough. I, I'm actually going to try and get it with this though real quick. Like I said, I don't really recommend using crescent wrenches. Um, if you have a 17 millimeter wrench, definitely use that instead. All right, so I ended up getting it with the wrench, again with the drain plug. That was a little too tight. Um, I was risking kind of rounding off the sides. Again, uh, do as I say, not as I do. I definitely don't recommend using a crescent wrench. Um, it's, it's not a good practice. I thought I had a 17 millimeter wrench, but the highest I had was actually a uh, 15 millimeter, so we're making do. Uh, this black pipe right here is your exhaust header coming down, so be careful. Um, it will be a little hot, so try and avoid that if you can. Um, I'm going to get this out, and then I'll show you guys the breakdown for how it goes back in and kind of what to look for inside the screen. Alright guys, so I got that screen assembly out, so it's made up of the cap at the end. And as you can see, I kind of started marring that up a little bit and starting to uh, kind of round it off. Um, the cap has this O-ring that will go on it as well. Uh, make sure that is on there or else you'll have a leak. And then you have the spring. The spring is tapered at one end. The tapered end goes into the cap. And then you have the screen. So the screen is what acts kind of as your oil filter. Um, you can't really see down in there, but that's where if you had any metal shavings or any contaminants, they would kind of collect and it'd prevent them from doing damage to your engine. So you want to take either brake cleaner or carb cleaner or just some fresh gasoline and just give this a real good cleaning before reinstalling it. Um, and once that's done, just take a little bit of oil on your finger, run around that O-ring just to create a nice seal on it and uh, it's ready to reassemble. So I'm gonna get that thrown in now. So this can be a little tricky because you got to decompress the spring as you actually thread it on the first couple threads. Um, it's not, shouldn't be too bad, but that is something to kind of keep in mind. Uh, at this point, it'd probably be best to let your bike come to a completely cooled state. That way you can work around your exhaust and not worry about it burning you um, as I'm doing now. All right, so we got a couple threads on that. Now it should stay in place on its own without us having to hold it. I gotta admit, this is kind of a weird setup. Um, you know, I've done oil changes on a lot of cars. I'm actually, a lot of people don't know this, I'm actually a mechanic by trait. Um, this whole screen setup is something that I'm a little unfamiliar with and it's a, uh, it's a little weird, not gonna lie. Uh, I don't know if I like it or not, but um, it just, it kinda, it almost seems like you're doing something wrong, like, but we'll see. So, again, just with your drain, just like with your drain plug, it doesn't have to be super tight. You don't need a crank on it. Just give it a nice snugging up. And we're ready to move on. All right, guys, so last step, filling it with oil. Um, the dipstick 
is the fill plug on this bike and it is actually on the opposite side. It's on the side with the exhaust. Um, I'm going to be using what Honda recommends. It's Honda GN4 four-stroke motorcycle oil, 10W30. Um, there's a lot of debate on what oil works best. Um, honestly, it's oil standards are pretty similar. Um, there, don't get me wrong, there's definitely some that are better than others, but honestly, as long as you're using uh, a good quality, like well-known brand, you're gonna be fine. Um, but my recommendation, stick with OEM. Um, Honda's pretty strict, especially if you have a bike that's under warranty, they're pretty strict on what you can and can't use. So if you have the ability to go to a Honda dealership, just get the OEM. It's not that much more expensive than what any other type of oil would cost. And then once your bike's fully broken in and out of warranty, you can start playing around with different oil types and figuring out what you like and what works best for you. Um, so yeah, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get this baby topped off and wrap up this oil change. Um, like I said before, it takes about 600 milliliters or decimal six quarts. Um, so just a little over a half a quart. Um, don't, don't overfill them. Everybody uh, thinks that you have to weigh overfill or not, I don't wanna say weigh overfill. Everybody thinks you need to hit that full line. Your oil just needs to be above the minimum line. I like to get a nice balance of setting about right in the middle between half and three quarters above the min line. Um, that's just what I recommend. You're not gonna hurt your engine by filling it to the full line. Just know that it's not necessary. So my funnel doesn't exactly uh, fit in the opening. The opening for this is uh, pretty small. So we're just gonna go slow and see how much I spill. My guess, a lot. Um, if you never really are sure how much to add or you think you're adding too much, you can always do like the fill and check, add a little bit, check the level, add a little bit, check the level, and uh, go from there. All right, so I went ahead and added uh, the rest of the oil um, off camera. I didn't think you guys wanted to sit there and just watch me add oil for two or three minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, check the level, see where I'm at, and go from there. Um, a lot of people don't know this on these engines. When you're checking the level, you don't actually thread the dipstick in. It's where it's at with the dipstick touching the threads. So in other words, just press the end, not actually thread it in. I'm gonna pull that out. And we're just probably about a quarter. So I'm actually gonna add a little more. All right guys, so I just finished up with the uh, oil change. I'm getting ready to test run it now. I did spill a little bit of oil, but it looks like I ended up adding uh, right at about 400 milliliters. And that put it nicely at about the three quarter mark. So like I said before, the 600 that they recommend will fill it to the max fill line. Um, what you should do now, what I'm about to do is turn your bike on, let it run for a little bit, um, check and make sure that there's no leaks on the drain plug or the screen that we took off. And then also just listen for any weird sounds, any like knocking uh, sounds will indicate that you're low on oil. Uh, which brings me to my next point. After you're done um, checking, or I'm sorry, why not? After you've let it run for a little bit and you've checked and make sure that the, nothing's leaking, that it sounds the way it should, once you turn it off, go ahead and do one final check and make sure your oil leveled it and drop a little bit and then top off as needed. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do that now.
All right guys, so everything's looking good. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up from here. If you guys have any questions, like I said, please don't hesitate to drop them down below. I'd love to help you guys. And I got a couple more videos coming out later this week, so uh, stay tuned for that and let me know if there's anything else you guys would like to see. Also, please subscribe and uh, hit that like button. I'll catch you guys next time.